Alright, hello everybody. Um, in a previous video that I made, actually about Cisco telephones, of course you see them on the, your screen, so you're probably imagining if you haven't read the video title, which I don't see why you wouldn't read the video title, but um, this video is going to be about Cisco phones. Not really about my demonstration, unlike my last video that I made. In my last video I did say that these videos of mine seem to drum up a lot of views, and that's usually the case. Of course, that this certainly was with my previous video, not only good with that, but also because of Google's wonderful AdSense program. Um, and while I really have no obligation to make videos or even help people with this sort of software or this sort of stuff because I'm no expert, I do try to help people where I can, especially because I start at the same position as a lot of people when I first get into something. And a very big issue when I first got into, you know, playing around with uh, a private branch exchange via a voice over IP phones is that the Cisco phones can be a real pain in the neck, especially when uh, you have to get them all right and all that, because it's not just a simple going in and pressing, a, pressing buttons and doing all that easy stuff. No, it's way difficult, way more difficult, and I'm sure a lot of people have actually uh, learned that firsthand when they've uh, first got their Cisco phone out of the box from eBay and wanted to plug it in and expect it to work just right. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you also realize that no, it is not that simple. But at the same time, it it is a pretty simple concept. I mean, we're we're I mean, I'll go about to show you right now. So um, I have my 7945, which is my phone that I use the most because it's the nicest and it's got the nice uh, backlit LCD and color screen. And I also have a 7941 right there. Now I'm not going to be doing anything with that 7941, um, but I'm just having it here because just to prove that it does work. Uh, I, would do, I mean, I do want to say that it does work with this. So what I'm doing here will work with the 7941, 7961, 7942, and 62, I'm sure, and more. I don't think the 7940 or 60 will work doing this. I think it's a different way of doing it. I'm fairly certain because that's, that's what I was using before this. Um, so like I said, you'll probably need to... Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of reference on material online for that. So... If you've ever, ever gotten a phone from your Cisco phone from eBay, I'm sure everybody's already looked up, how do you factory reset a Cisco phone? Well, unfortunately, with these, there's really no way of just factory resetting a Cisco phone. And if you go by the prescribed method on eBay, I mean eBay, on YouTube, um, you'll get this little error right here. Well, it's not really an error. It says upgrading, and uh, you, sometimes it will keep restarting, and it'll show a little target right here on the Cisco logo when it's booting up. Well... I'm going to show you how we can uh, fix this, and no, it's not just going to be a simple you know, couple of button presses. I do have my laptop here, of course, so there's going to be some laptop in doing stuff. Uh, oh, and if you don't know how to do this, because chances are, if you buy a Cisco phone from eBay, it is not going to have the right firmware on it, because, like a lot of these, they're pulled directly from a Cisco CUCM system. Um, which is Cisco's proprietary little private branch exchange phone system if you're not aware. Now, these Cisco phones natively support two different protocols at least. I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if there's more, but I don't think so. There's SCCP, which is, uh, I, I believe it's Cisco's proprietary um, format, and then there's SIP, which is something, uh, if you're going to be using this without a Cisco CUCM, and chances are you are, if you, you know, I mean, if you don't know that. But, like asterisk free PBF6, all that stuff. That is not going to be using the SCCP protocol. That is SIP. That is going to be using the SIP protocol. So you're going to need the SIP firmware on this. Now, chances are, like I said, if you bought one of these from eBay, it is not going to have that on there. So you're going to need to flash that. It does not support it with the software it already has if it doesn't have it. So basically, if this has the SCCP software, and you can go into the various little menus and figure out if you, if you know what you're doing, um, it'll tell you if it's basically SCCP or SIP, but like I said, you can't just switch it over using a press of a couple buttons. You actually have to flash new firmware on it. So if you're not, if if you're trying to figure out how to get in somewhere, you probably ought to just stop what you're doing, and you got to start start by doing this. So unplug your phone. And we're gonna plug it back in. We just lost where I plug it back into. Isn't that clever and genius? All right. So before we go and plug it in. You're going to want to press and hold the hashtag key, really the pound key, unless you want to sound like an idiot. So hold, go ahead and hold that in, plug it in, 
It does this little boot up thing. Now what's going to start doing? So it's going to start flashing these lights. It's going to do this for, I believe, up to 60 seconds. Usually, we we'll only do top, bottom, then start the boot process. So, what you're going to want to start doing: press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, star zero pound. And there we go. I don't think there's a way out of this menu. So, once you're in here, uh, you're committed to doing a, a firmware upgrade. Now. Getting the firmware is, can be the next part of the hassle. Not that this was much of a hassle. But uh, if you're aware, Cisco does not give access to their files. As you can see right here, there's a little lock. Oh, let me get that out of the way. There's a little... This is very helpful. <laughs> uh, there's a little lock next to uh, the firmware right here. Actually, you probably can't see my mouse cursor anyway, so there's no point in putting it next to it. There's a little lock next to the um, file information. Now, what that means, not only you have to sign in, not that signing in is going to make much of a difference, it also says you're going to need to have a... Actually, I can probably show you by just clicking download. You need to log in with your Cisco uh, user ID. And not only that, but you're also going to need to uh, have a support contract with them. Now, probably what that means is you're going to need to either have a Cisco CUCM bought through Cisco with a bunch of Cisco phones, Chances are the exact same ones that you're trying to download for. I can't imagine this will let you go that too fast and loose with their software. But also, um, yeah, I'm sure you can get it if you ask them nicely and go through a lot of different people. Or you can uh, do it the way I'm about to show you. Now, I'm not going to provide any download links for Cisco software. Um, I think that would be a little bit reckless. Not only that, but it's disrespectful to Cisco because this is their software and I wouldn't want to be hosting it on any sort of server that's owned operated or has my name on it because that would not look good for me. So what 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 I do is well, first before you want to do that make sure you're in the right software page. So obviously right here I am for unified IP phone 7945G and it says up here session for information initiation protocol SIP software. If we go back here there's gonna be two different um there's two different options well there's technically four different options but there's only two that you really need to worry about. There's SIP then there's SCCP. Make sure you click SIP. Um, if not, then you have to do this all over again. And uh, that would probably be a big pain in the butt for you. Alright. So what I usually do, and you're probably not going to be able to find the latest release the way I'm about to show you. So it's probably just a good idea to check. As you can see, they have a lot of, a lot of different versions. You just keep going down and there's plenty of them to choose from, so it's not like it's that big of an issue if you can't find the latest release on the internet. If you absolutely want to have the latest release, then you probably shouldn't be doing it the way I'm showing you, and you should probably get a Cisco contract, um, but we're not doing that. So go ahead and make sure you get the zip. There's going to be two, there's usually going to be two. There's going to be a cop.sgn, there's going to be a .zip. Make sure you go ahead and copy that. Just put that in your clipboard, and then you're going to go over to Google, and you're going to put that into Google. And uh, you could probably, there's like, like the, for example, autodownload.com, if you click that. And then if you find, if you, if you look for it on this page, I'm not really sure why it's, actually, it's probably not go there. I'm sure you've already seen it, but I didn't use that link. Let's go to linkforshared.com. Oh, that's not good. There we go. And you can get the link and put the captcha. And if you do that, it'll let you download it exactly what you need. So that's how you do. It. That's how I do it, at least. And that's probably how you're gonna have to do it with most Cisco software, unfortunately. But I've never had any issues with it. Now, um, the next thing we're going to need to do is so you're gonna need to get some fir it's some software installed on your computer. Well, first you're gonna want to extract your um, that, that that zip file that you just downloaded. I down I, I downloaded it to a full I extracted to a folder conveniently named Cisco, and fittingly it seems to work just fine. So we go ahead and do that. Um, then you're going to need a piece of uh, software name and also known as TFTPD64, TFTPD32. That's basically just what uh, what um what's um my mind is completely blank blank right now. Um, that that that's just your um, 
if you can run 64-bit or 32-bit processor, but I'm sure most of the time you're going to be needing 64-bit anyway, so... But it doesn't have to be TFTBD. Um, you could use whatever you want, just as long as it has a, a function to have a TFTP DHCP server. You're going to need that. Otherwise, there's no... I mean, the Cisco phone, it relies on seeing a DHCP server and the network it's plugged into. There's no, I mean, you can't set it on the phone to look for one. So that's why, why we have to do it this way. So go ahead and uh, turn off your Wi-Fi if you're using a laptop like me. I have a button that just turns it off. That works really well. And then you're going to want to plug your... What I have set up. I have my phone plugged into a PoE, so, uh, PoE adapt injector. And then from there I just have an Ethernet cable. I'm going to plug it into my computer now. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds, depending on your computer, to uh, detect. But I don't think we need to wait. We can just go ahead and set up what we need to anyways. So go ahead, go ahead and open up Network and Sharing Center. Oh, by the way, I'm using Windows 7. I think Network and Sharing Center is still there in Windows 10. I don't like Windows 10. Um, so we're going to, I mean, we could go here, but the best way to do is go to Change Adapter Settings. And see all your various adapters in your computer. Go over here to Local Area Connection. Properties, uh, Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4. Then we're going to need to set up some uh, IP addresses. So I'm just going to do 192.168.0.1 because basically this computer is going to be a default gateway, a gateway for a network that the phone is connected to, if that makes sense. Um, and this computer is going to hand it an IP address for the a TFTP IP address. But this is basically the default gateway. I'm sure you can name it, you know, like 247 or you can probably name it uh, 45 dot 5. But I, you know, I just usually put a 0 0.1, just the simplest thing. If I would probably just go with that. It gets subnet mask automatically. Don't, need, don't put in a default gateway or a uh, DNS server. They're not needed. You don't need to do that. And I'm sure if you do it anyway, it's just kind of, well, I don't think it would screw anything up if you use DNS server, but default gateway probably won't work. Just go and validate settings upon exit. Click OK. OK. And then close. Oh, this comes up every time you set up a static IP address for some reason. All right. So once you have your static IP information set up, open up your TFTP server of choice. Like I said, I'm using TFTPD uh, 64. Um, this usually never saves any information I put in it for some reason, so we're just going to set everything manually. Let's see here. Cisco. That's a, that seems appropriate. We can go to settings, and uh, let's bind the TFTP to our 192.168.0.1 address. And then for DHCP, we're going to start the address 192.168.0.1. I usually put 2. I really don't put one because that would start causing conflicting addresses and I don't think it would work. Um, size of the pool, you can put one, two, three, I usually just put three just in case. It um, doesn't really matter. And then for the default router, 192.168.0.1 or whatever you set up in your network settings that we just did, mask 255.255.255.0 unless you want something else for some reason. And I think that's it. We're just going to bind DHCP to our uh, address. Oh no, we have to restart TA. Okay, so let's not do any bindings because that means you have to restart and then when we go back in here, not going to save anything. I'm really not sure why it does that. But that's okay. You know, so let's go back to Cisco. That's really irritating. All right, so now we're going to go down to the drop down and select our appropriate uh, network card, which in this case is 192.168.0.1. Now check this and make sure that uh, 
it's going it's it doesn't move around because usually it wants to do that especially once your phone starts connecting and disconnecting because it seems to want to do that all right so let's just go ahead and give our phone a reboot and like I said you're gonna want to watch for this little thing right the server interface right here because it's gonna change it just did so we're gonna go ahead and put this back And within a couple of minutes, not even that, it should only take no more than a couple of seconds. Unless it wants to make an idiot out of me. Wouldn't that be great? Right. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to zoom into it. Um, as you can see, it's gotten an IP address at the top, 192.168.0.2. And it's starting its process of downloading the software from the computer. Um, this usually takes a couple of minutes, so it's probably just a good idea to go step out, maybe get a cookie or, I don't know, do what people do when they're bored. I, it's up to you because it, it doesn't take that long, but you know, it's certainly not fun just to sit here and watch it all. I'm probably going to do that. So, yeah, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. All right, so as you can see, the phone is now flashed with uh, the firmware that I just had. If yours doesn't work, I would recommend trying a different firmware, just going through that same process over again. Now, what I'm showing you is it's the phone actually says unprovisioned now you're probably thinking okay now I can just go ahead and do my updates from the phone well my uh, settings from the phone but no you can't let me see if I can do this without getting in the way um let's go into settings let's go down to device configuration so select that you can see we have a SIP uh, configuration go there let's go into line settings line one and let's go ahead and unlock the configuration, which if you didn't know was star star pound. And as you can see, there is no, you can't make any configurations. It only shows name, short name. That's not really that effective. So you're going to have to, as you can see, there's nothing you can configure. Um, from here, you're going to have to create a, a configuration um, file. That's an XML file. Uh, it's going to be scp.cnf.xml and you just go from there you just configure everything you need to set it to you which now now that you're in the regular mode the regular now that um you um are in the actual firmware you can actually go down here and set an alternate tftp server then you can change it right here now um it um uh, you, uh, you, it doesn't have to be the same server as your um, your uh, Raspberry Pi or whatever you choose to use for the SIP, so the, the uh, PBX. Uh, of course, I don't have it like that. So that's one of the few things you could uh, edit in here. Everything else, it has to be done through that scp.cnf.xml file. Um, there's plenty of different people on the internet. Just type scp.cnf.xml and then Cisco into Google, and then it'll give you everything you need to know about uh, making your own... Um, configuration file for one of these. So thank you very much for watching and that'll be it.